I think that DeMar was DeMar, and, you know, they're one of the elite teams in the NBA. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a reminder that we saw with Golden State. They made threes, and we, we did a poor job of fouling. I look forward to see that on tape. But I, I, I give them credit, you know, like it doesn't surprise anybody what they were going to try to do in the third period after they got down. We actually started the third period well, but uh, I think that we'll all look at the game and see, you know, the, the differential and free throws uh, attempted. And uh, the turnovers were kind of even, one at 21, one at 23. And usually when we don't win the rebounding, um, we don't win the game. And uh, their offensive rebounds, I think, hurt us a lot uh, throughout the game, especially in that period. What kind of clarification were you given if any on the offensive foul call and then underneath the basket? Not a lot. You know, just that they reviewed it and they decided that it wasn't. And so you don't have really that much chance to get into a conversation uh, and you, you trust their judgment that they've gone to see it and review it. And I just... Uh, you know, trust their judgment that they're going to get it right. Although we missed it during that Oklahoma City where Dario, you know, me and Joe called the timeout. That's probably the first time I feel that it was uh, blatantly wrong. Um, and so, you know, you learn, you give them the benefit of the doubt. What happened with Joel before the game? You said he was a problem. What happened? We just came in and, you know, he goes through the warm ups and just didn't feel comfortable. It's really that simple. You know, where he, uh, he, he felt okay in the morning. You know, he went through a shoot-around. Um, and then, you know, a half an hour, whatever it is before the game, I learned, we learned that he just didn't feel comfortable playing, you know, like he wasn't going to be able to give what he feels would help the team. And so we, uh, we decided uh, to, to, to rest him again. But at this point, do you worry that losing these leads often in the second half is becoming too much of a trend? I mean, you're always worried about it. I think that is it something that we think is going to continue to be an epidemic? No, I don't. Like, I saw great things from this group. I saw a team fight without Joe and without JJ. You know, we got up big at home. We ended up losing that lead to a really good team. And we're disappointed. But uh, I, I go a few layers deeper, and I see what I see in that locker room and how they genuinely care. And we're going to get better. We're going to get better. We're going to get healthy. We're going to get better. Tonight, I thought we were going to have Trevor, who would have helped us physica physically in that game. That's a bunch of men down in that, that Toronto locker room. And, uh, you know, there were times that I didn't feel the physical side of that game that we need to feel against that veteran team. And um, no, I don't. We will fix it. We'll move on. We'll get better from this. Is that on the defensive boards? I think you gave up like 40% of their, their shots. They rebounded. Is that, is that so I, I, th I think that's right. You know, like I don't know the actual number, Rich, but I, I felt like, you know, Valanciunas when he played, Serge when he played quite a bit, you know, and Pirtle, like the, they really hurt us on the offense when I mean, you felt it. Initially, I thought it was a lot out of them uh, pick and rolling, but it wasn't. It was just they gained position down there, and, you know, we just had a hard time as a team. And that's not us. We're a very good rebounding team. When you look at the percentages in the NBA after 30, 31 games, tonight we were not. With the turnover issues you guys are having, is that something you expect when you're a team that moves and shares the ball as much as you guys do, or do you think it's just stuff you guys need to do? Excuse me, clean up on it. we got to clean up on it. You know, like you go back and without getting into too much coach speak, you, you, we can identify who and where and when turnovers happen. And, you know, there are actually breakdowns of what's this team like in half court? If the game were just a half court sport, like what do they do? What do they do when it's an early offense, like the first six seconds of a shot clock? What do they do underneath? What do they do on the side? You know, and so, like, we, we feel clear, we know where the problem lies, but in general, it lies with us, and I'm the head coach, and we got to fix it. And, uh, you know, some of that is easy to blame. We play fast. At times, you know, we're, you know, some of our guys are young. Most of them aren't anymore. 
And just, I think when we, when we really critically assess the turnovers, you know, let's dig deep and, and, and understand who, why, and when, and then the world becomes a little bit cleaner. And uh, it is something we can talk about, but at the end of the day, we got to fix it. I'm the head coach, it is on me, and it keeps us up late at night. Uh, DeMar and Kyle combined for 23 free throw attempts, with them being the guards having that high of a total. What were they doing that you guys weren't able to stop cleaning at the basket? I just think it's what they are. Like, you know, it really, it really shouldn't shock any of us that they came in with numbers. Those numbers are high, I concede. And what they do is they attack pressure. They bury their head. They find a spot. They bull their way into environments that, that are confrontational and, you know, expose that collision. Um, DeMar is, is gifted in so many ways. You know, you look down and to have 45 points, you know, w uh, 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 against what analytics would say aren't very efficient shots, and he just picks spots and jumps. And he sure makes a lot, and he's been doing it for a long time. I think the physical nature of how they attack uh, is, is the main sort of big picture reason why they can get to the line and get calls. Brent, I'm sorry if I All right. already asked this question a little late, but you knew that Toronto was going to go on the run. I think they jumped us. Like they, they just crawled into us. It wasn't like they double team Ben or you know they blitz pick and rolls. They got physical, and, and you know and you know it. That's what the NBA does. And like we, you know, I burned two timeouts to try to get us strong. There's no magic bean. There's no magic play. It's body, body, ball stuff. If they come up and press you, you're going to have to back them off and create space and possibly expose fouls like Kyle and DeMar do. But when you look at it, you know, they went a little bit smaller. They switched out on everything. They got up and in. And, uh, you know, they went on an offensive tear and hit, made a bunch of threes. I don't know the exact number. It was, what was that? Yeah, it felt like 10 of eight, 10 of 11. And it just felt like that. And I think, um, you know, that, that type of mentality, to me, sort of set the tone for the, the third period. When, when the offense stalls like it did during the Raptors' third quarter run, how do you guys remedy that? With the group that we have, it's, it, it's by committee. It's not like, let's post Joel or bring JJ off some screens and draw attention. It's got to be done by a five people sharing the ball and moving the ball. Late in the game, in that period, we ended up playing a lot through Dario. We sort of anointed him as the target we wanted to play through. But in general, when I go back to a timeout and I'm looking at the team that's available and you look at it, you know, we, we do some things to free people up, but by and large, I think it's got to become space and movement, not like magic bean plays. And we, uh, we, we, we got jumped, we got stood up, and I think um, you know, the tape will tell a lot more, but I feel like with this group we had our best solution was to spread them out and move ourselves in the ball and find opportunities for somebody on that team to, uh, to find gaps. Well, Dario had one of his better games. <laughs> was that a matter of him, like you said, running the offense through him, letting him be? I think some of it was that, you know, I think some of it he found stuff himself. I thought Cove shot the ball well, you know, I thought Ben making a few rise up jump shots was, uh, was encouraging. Um, you know, we'll go back and we'll, we'll look at it. But there were some things, you know, you leave the game against a hot team. I mean, I think it's 11 out of 12, you know, the fourth in defense, fourth in offense, number one at creating turnovers. Ben there done that for a while now. Um, I, I leave disappointed that, that, again, you know, we had a lead, we lost it, but I also leave, you know, encouraged by some of the signs that we saw. What do you think? It's an obvious answer I give. You know, it's like you get Ben Simmons that can pick apart a gym like you need the space. You know, when you, when you look at it, at the end of the day, you go, you know, what is it, 9 for 29 at 31%? That's not going to get it done. That won't get it done. And, you know, we need, 
We need to make some shots. Uh, we'll continue to do a good job with sharing the ball. I'm proud of how we pass. I like the mentality that the team has on trying to go from, you know, good to great and find teammates. But the end receiver, you know, we're going to look for more. We're going to look for more efficient shooting and uh, encourage our guys to do it, continue to practice like we practice. I don't want anybody feeling tight or stiff. We'll make it all we want. But the preparation of loading up and playing low and showing your hands in a belief factor of, you know, your mind and, and really dealing with the preparation beforehand with your footwork, all the technical sides of loading up and believe in what we do, we're going to have to get better at that. Brett, speaking of Dario, I mean, he was really dynamic tonight. How important is it that he steps up like this, especially when the roster is a little depleted as it is right now? And then also, how can he continue to play like he did tonight, even when Joel is in the game? I mean, of course, and I don't know, right? Um, we, 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 we need him. When you don't have those targets, you know, you really go into a game and, you know, you're wondering how you're going to score. Like, who, who, who are you going to go through and go to? And it's obvious, like, when Joe and JJ are there. And tonight, you know, we made Dario target, and he responded. Um, how does he continue to do that? Uh, we, we hope, you know, that, like everything, it starts with health. And, and making sure that we get our guys the proper rest. And we're in a really, we're in a tough run right now. You, you know, we're, we're in a tough run. Uh, some self-inflicted, some, you know, a deteriorated team. None of it is anything that we don't own. But, uh, you know, we're in a tough stretch right now, and we, we will get through this. There's going to be no meltdowns. Uh, we got a good group. We feel purposeful with what we're trying to get done. And uh, got a tremendous amount of faith with the people behind me in that locker room, the good people that bust their tail. And uh, we, feel, we feel strong about the direction that we're heading in regards to what we deem important and how we try to do it. And so now we just got to get it done. Situation where, again, a third quarter lead and a race for you as a team. And when this keeps happening, what's the confidence level right now uh, in terms of kind of, kind of just getting it turned around? It's hard to say, you know, our confidence now. I think, you know, first half how we play against second team or third team on the on East, you know, that's the, how we're supposed to play every game. And what you say, our third quarter again is like our bad quarter. Plus that we got like 23 turnovers. And I think that's on us, that's on us, on a player, you know, like I lost a couple of balls. Uh, I don't know, Rashawn, Ben, TJ, everybody lost, you know, one, two, three balls and that's not going to work. And that's on us. This is on us some players to fix that. And coaches try to help us, you know, every day, you know, to to be to be ready, you know, to come in the play with the jump start, uh, try to, you know, hold that ball very, very hard. And uh, sometimes it's like that, but like when you play like first half, like how we play, you know, sharing the ball, playing sometimes, you know, when you have a fun like that, sometimes you go down. I need a, I think we need to change the page a little bit, not just all our game. I think we need to change a little bit our game. We need to be mentally ready. We want to be like playoff team, you know. We cannot anymore, you know, have a like, lot of fun, you know. Sometimes it's nice to see, you know, for, for, the, for the fans. But my point is, like, we need to come on the court and play dirty, play tough, you know. Sometimes it's maybe not fancy, maybe it's not looking good. good. We need to just come and maybe just have a right play, tough play, if it's the ugly play. You know, sometimes it's like that. I think if we if we start to do things like that, you know, we can be so much better. Dario, what difference do you think playing tough, playing dirty will make? Like you said, I think like uh, I think our our level, our aggression, our defense need to be like from the beginning until the end the same. You know, if we start like in the fourth quarter, if we start, you know, try to catch the ball, ball try to steal that balls, you know, referees will gonna call. Call uh, that things. I think we need to be show up, show up on the court uh, immediately. Show up, play the tough and uh, play dirty. No ugly for. Sometimes you know, fans will come on a game and they will say it was the ugly game, but we won. You know, I hope some days will come like that. 
because when we when we win the games here, we play like beautiful. Look, like everybody sharing ball, you know. But sometimes, you know, just that toughness what Philly got in 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 in, uh, in the downtime in the heart of the city. We need to just come on the court to play like that. Last one, go. Dario, uh, you had one of your best offensive games, but you had a lot of responsibility. How can you do that when Joel and JJ also play when you're full screen? Uh, of course, you know, when it's Joel not here and JJ, of course, like I have more opportunity for, for myself, you know, I have better chance maybe to be involved in the game, to, to help the teammates, to help, to help in, uh, if I can say like that, you know, to organization offense to, to Ben and to, 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 to TJ. And I think I got a pretty game, and but end of the day, you know, I will go to sleep, I will be sad because we didn't win this game. And I told you, you know, we need to just come on the court and play hard, hard from first until nine minutes. If it's ugly, ugly, you know, we need to start to play like that. Thanks, guys. Team with just six was how six the game played. Six shots total. Is that how the game played out? Was yeah, they changed it up a little bit. Uh, I was trying to get more people involved and just saw different things on the court. Up sixteen in the third. What do you think changed to get them back? In the We've just been. Uh, I don't think we've been focusing down the stretch, um, missing shots, uh, not calling the right plays, things like these little things like that, uh, where it comes down to us focusing and making sure we're committed to defense and offense at the same time. You can keep going. You can. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's been a lack of focus? Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, I think you know we just come together. And I think we can figure it out as a team. Um, we all want to win. Everyone wants to be here, so. It's not one of those things where guys don't want to you know, win or anything like that. Um, but I think we'll pull it together. This has been a hard time. Such a game for you guys. I think there's not seven of the last eight and games. Mm -hmm. are, some games certainly winnable. Um, is that the tough part right now because you guys have been in Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, but I think we can get a great run going down the stretch uh, into Christmas. So, <laughs> um, no, I believe in this team and the coaches here. So, I mean, I don't doubt anybody in uh, the ability for us to win games. How much do you guys miss uh, Joel on defense today? Oh, a lot, every game. Um, but we, we got to learn to play without him. So um, when he's in, you know, it's great. But when he's not here, we, we still got to play and compete, uh, which is what we do. But we got to learn how to, you know, close our games. And some of the stuff you guys are doing, is it, is it nice maybe to maybe do too much, maybe just, better, maybe just be a little more patient when you have the ball down low and when it works more clock? Or? Uh, it just depends what they give you, really. Uh, you could say that, um, or you could say come down, you know, run a pick and roll every time. But uh, you know, it's, not, it's just not the way the game's going to be played every every time. And then you look, you look at the games that you you look at the games that you guys had won earlier mm -hmm. against playoff contenders, and now struggling against sub five hundred teams. Aside from the focus, what else do you think it is? Just got to make shots, uh, get stops, and, and win games. Honestly, I believe we can.